Well, hello everyone and welcome. It's been a while since I've done a video um, just because we've been so busy behind the scenes. But for those who don't know me, my name is John Miller. I'm the executive director here at the Shippensburg Historical Society. And today I wanted to reach out to our homeschoolers as well as youth group organizations that are out there. Not necessarily in the Shippensburg area, but maybe in some of the surrounding communities as well because of the fact that we have had a tremendous summer here um, launching educational programs one after another and we have been very successful so definitely want to give a shout out to my volunteers for their help and dedication with that because if it wasn't for them my goals of launching these uh, programs pretty much wouldn't have happened this year not because of COVID, but just because of the fact that we've been pretty much closed or the fact that we've been doing reservations. But for the last two months, so far we've had an excellent summer here at the Historical Society. So for my students out there or those who basically do homeschooling or youth groups, um, we did a family fun day um, we participated in that, uh, sponsored by the greater area of Shippensburg's chamber. And we've had a lot of questions regarding what kind of homeschool programs do we do? Do we even come out or do the homeschoolers, are they allowed to come here? So this video here, like I said before, is pretty much for you. So as far as the programs that we offer here, this was what I launched right before COVID hit, which forced all of us to close down. Unfortunately, because of that, I was not able to launch these um, until actually until the summer of this year. And so if you're looking for a program, and this could be for homeschoolers coming here or youth groups that would like me to come to them, um, some of the popular programs that I've done here or put together here, these are the same programs I did when I was with the National Park Service, the Maryland Park Service, as well as up in Monterey Pass. And these programs are great because it uses um, museum quality reproductions to showcase clothing, uniforms, accoutrements, or equipment, things that would have been used by people um, on a single daily basis, for an example. So if you're looking for Civil War, um, we offer a couple programs for that. Union Soldiers Dressed in Gray, this is a program that talks about the New Yorkers who came through Shippensburg in 1863 wearing their gray uniforms. And of course, when you think of the American Civil War, a lot of people say, okay, that's early war stuff. When the Union wore gray and the Confederates wore blue, here it is in 1863. Well, gray uniforms were their standard issue um, as far as the uniforms that they wore. And of course, with this program here, I showcase a lot of different things that they would have used as well as two variations of uniforms that would have been worn by these Union soldiers of gray. We also have tools of the Civil War soldiers, so if you're looking for more of what it was that a Shippensburg uh, male citizen would have looked like when he went into the military in 1862 or what the military looked like in 1863, this is a great option here. And we also showcase Confederate uniforms because of the fact that in the beginning of the war, the Confederates were pretty much state issue or they ran off of what was called a commutation system. And by the time you get to the Battle of Antietam, the Richmond Bureau of Clothing pretty much starts taking over. And then from there, they'll start issuing out uniforms to the Confederate Army. And because of that, the Confederate Army gets more better uniformed and equipped as the war goes on. Picture this, which we have over here in this binder. This is a great way for students to learn about the role of African Americans. And what this does, it uses letters, um, as well as other documentation, such as photographs, monuments, uh, art, to kind of get to know what the, um, with these men from Shippensburg area, what some of their experiences were during the Civil War, as well as what some of the experiences of their uh, 
regiments went through. And of course, we have um, cards that we have that have a bio as well as the tombstone of the individuals that are buried down in Locust Grove. This is a pretty cool program. Uh, if you're interested in this, there is a video up on YouTube that will cover that. Um, if you're looking for something um, that's more hands-on, but at the same time um, requires a lot of critical thinking, we have our teaching with artifacts, documents, whatever, whatnot. And this is really great because it allows students to handle certain objects within a, a controlled environment. So they can handle a photograph, um, there's questions there. This is for the younger students, and then here's the same program for the older students. So they can look at photographs, they can try to um, do answers on a video, sound recordings, artwork, um, of course, written document here. It's just a really great hands-on type of activity. You can see where they can analyze an artifact to posters, even maps. And for homeschoolers, I would definitely recommend that program right there. Um, other programs that we offer, of course, um, would be Wigwags, the uh, Talking Civil War Flags, and here's the sheet for that. So we have the history of Myers' system of communication via flags, and then on the inside we have instructions, as well as examples, um, or the worksheets for the students themselves. We supply the flags for them, and they learn how basically how to communicate using a series of one, twos, as well as threes. We're looking at creating a, uh, just a generic, kind of like a badge for youth groups that kind of have some of the same uh, uniform requirements as what the Boy Scouts. And one of the things that we're thinking about doing is, and this actually came to us by a Cub Scout uh, leader, but having some of the youth groups complete Civil War trails here in Shippensburg which this pretty much takes them around parts of town. And then after that, we have the colonial aspect, which this workbook here was made possible by Franklin County Visitors Bureau. And on the inside, we have different items for, and different things for the children to work on. And this here, if you think about it, it's very similar to what a junior ranger program would be if you went to a state park or one of the federal parks. We also have activity sheets here for the students who participate in tools of the Civil War soldier. Um, we have where they can anal do analysis on a photograph to the Civil War rations. And then after that, I do the breakdowns of just uniform examples. That way they can see the placement of where the items go. And then on the back, they answer some of the questions. So this is really good and we're going to probably get Franklin County to print this out for us too. And then we're also working on a Scouts Research Guide to Earning a Merit Badge in American Heritage. And we're going to go ahead and use the Declaration of Independence as a prime example. This here I have to get certified um, that way I can be able to sign off on the paperwork. So this is kind of a work in progress, but we can't wait until this is launched. Other activities that we have when students come in, of course, we have house bingo. This is really great because the students have to look for the objects, but it also allows them to kind of freely explore the exhibits. And then we have cookie excavation, so if anybody loves digging in the dirt and looking for things, cookie excavation basically uses a cookie and it kind of helps the students um, to learn a little bit about what goes into archaeological or archaeological digs. And then 
This one here is pretty cool. Um, one of the things that we're doing is called joining the Army. This is great for elementary school age kids. <clears throat> they basically muster into the military and then from there I'll teach them how to march, how to drill. Um, if we can get somebody to make us some uh, toy guns out of plywood, um, I would even go ahead and show them the manual of arms that was required by a Civil War soldier. Once the program is over, they muster out of service. And the nice thing is, is that they get to take this home as a souvenir. And then last but not least, we have a program here to where you can use baking soda with water or lemon. And using this chart here, the kids can use Q-tips and write messages, um, kind of similar to what they did during the American Revolution. So these are some of the programs that we offer here. We're still working on a lot more. Um, let's go ahead and check out some of the actual hands-on activities that we have here for children. So this here is our hands-on history card. What I love about this is that if you've been to Gettysburg or down to the Smithsonian, they have their own version of this. And what you do is you put all the stuff that you want to showcase. So if you want to do a Civil War theme or a colonial theme, everything fits inside this box here. And then you can wheel it on the property or in this case at the library here in town would like for us to do something. We can pretty much wheel it right down to them. And it's so, it's pretty much, it's so simple. So this is your tabletop storage. What I love about this is that we have all of our games in it. So here we have cricket. Civil War baseball. The kids absolutely love this. Now we can actually use this as a tabletop. So here we have museum quality baseballs. This is pre-Civil War with the size. This is post-Civil War. And then after that, of course, we have various games, things that the kids can try out. Some of these toys, such as the spinner here, this has origins that go back to the Native Americans, going back hundreds of years. And kids love playing with this stuff. Another popular game that kids love, which I didn't think would be popular, but um, a lot of the smaller kids love to try to go ahead and try to get the ball in the cup. And as you can see, I'm not very good at it. Ring Tolls, um, this was more of a game for younger adults, uh, particularly girls. So each opponent gets two of these uh, sticks here. And the object of the game is to do that while the person tries to catch it. When they're getting pretty used to that, then what you do is you try to do both of them at the same time they try to catch, the other person tries to catch them. Pick up sticks, of course we have chess and checkers. And then one of the things that I had one of our board members pick up is this croquet set. Even though croquet is more of a modern game when we think of it in terms of North America, the origins of this game appear to go back to Ireland in the 1830s. However, the term croquet um, is French, which there is a story that a Frenchman who saw this being played uh, brought the game into England. Prior games to this would have been along the lines, and I'm hoping I'm saying this right, but um, Polly Molly, um, which was a game that was played in England. Either way, during the Victorian era, um, this was a very popular game for women to play, as well as younger adults. It really doesn't take off in North America until about the turn of the century going into the 1900s. Um, after World War II, the set was pretty much um, shortened a little bit. And then from there, this became a backyard game that many of Americans pretty much love to 
um, play while they were doing recreational activities in the yard. So this was kind of cool to kind of tie in something that is has its roots that go back to several hundred years and how within the last 170 years how this game kind of involves and takes off and then how more recently how this game becomes part of American culture just as much as English culture. So hands-on history card, a lot of different things that we can do with this. So one other area I'm going to take you folks to is going to be our research rooms that kind of showcase what we have as far as amenities are concerned. So this is library number two. We're going to go ahead and start with the same room we were just in. And within this library here, we have books that pertain to the area. Cumberland Valley, Pennsylvania, um, a little bit of Maryland, French Indian War, Revolutionary War. And then of course, this whole area here is dedicated to the American Civil War. And then this is our main conference room or library number one. And this is where all the Shippensburg items are located at from genealogy to family histories to um, other histories of different buildings and businesses and such. And then last but not least, we do have a classroom here that's part of the Fort Morris exhibit. So if you have a homeschool group or a youth group and you would like to come in for a visit to participate in programming or if you guys have any research needs, definitely let us know and definitely check us out. Until then, everybody take care out there and we'll see you later.